For those who don't know me very well, I'm a very emotional person, so it's gonna be hard for me to get through with a straight face, but, because it was, it was a really hard prep for me to get through. <laughs> but I was sent home, and the doctor told me that nothing he assumed was bodybuilding related. I could go back to training, to ease into it, nothing too crazy, nothing too heavy, which we weren't doing anyway that three weeks out, so I got back from that, started taking the Lasix every day, and got back to training slowly, slowly. That was when I switched to my keto diet. One of the reasons I did it was to kind of help flush the water off, because keto diets can help that. And obviously I was behind, I had taken some, we didn't know if I was behind even, I was holding so much water. But I had taken time off the gym, I was not on. I was eating less, but I was looking worse. So we threw me on the keto diet just to kind of lower the protein, which helps your kidneys. Less protein is better for the kidneys, and it was supposed to help flush some water off. So that was why we did keto. Felt like shit for that entire two weeks. Like crap. I'll show you a video here too of my chest cramping. You take these Lasix and your body's electrolytes are so out of whack that I was cramping in my hands. I couldn't text at points training. After a hard leg day or chest day, I was like waking up in the middle of the night, my quads cramping. It was awful for the entire time. My training sucked, energy was awful, but kept pushing through it and then at I mean honestly the only thing that got me through this was Ian and I haven't really talked about this out loud t to anybody other than shit so just voicing it and I'm not crying because I'm sad or because I'm fucking pitying myself I'm just so grateful that I made it through it and that I had my sister Ian <laughs> Along the way, like honestly, every single morning I woke up and I was so discouraged with how I looked. Like literally, like losing weight. I had, when you're flat, like when you're taking these diuretics and you're, I'm still holding on to water. I literally was, like people think you're flat. Tried like taking diuretics for four weeks straight, having no, nothing in your body, going so low carb, pushing cardio pushing everything and I was I did not practice posing this prep at all to be completely honest that's why I, I was like my routine I didn't practice because I was literally ashamed of myself when I looked in the mirror I was so discouraged every day every single morning I woke up to a text from Ian and he was like yo send me your weight send me a quick video of you posing let's see how you look he changed my diet like every day throughout the day and like every single time he's like, you look better man, we can get through this, like as long as the doctor gives you okay, we're gonna be fine. And same with my sister, like, I didn't even have to tell her how I was feeling, but she just knew. She's literally, my sister's the person who knows me better than myself, so she can just kind of tell by my mannerisms and how different I'd been acting for four weeks that I was myself. <laughs> and she was just, they were there for me. 100% of the way. Literally the world's worst person to try and talk when I get emotional. But yeah, short story, long story short, I wouldn't have made it through this prep without them. Every single day I was at their house, they were texting me, encouraging me, there for me along the way. And I really wouldn't have made it through without them. Okay, I need to stop talking about that and move on. So, two weeks went by of this fucking hell of feeling like shit, training, with just literally getting through the motions. I would come home and just lie down all day until it was time to work out, get the workout out of the way, go home and fucking lie there and question if I should even be doing this to myself, if I should just give up. And finally, I got through the two weeks and went to see the doctor and I had no idea what was going on at this point. If it wasn't going to be my kidneys or something, it would have been my heart. So something like that causing water is a lot worse than a kidney flare up. But he determined from the biopsy I have a rare form of IgA disease, which is an immune system. So essentially my immune system is kind of attacking itself. And we figured out that's what happened four years ago or whatever. And it can flare up kind of at any time in your life. So. <laughs> Things, stressors can cause it, like maybe if I was flying too much or I was getting sick, something attacked my body and it put too much stress on my immune system that it like 
my immune system can't always respond to it properly so it begins to attack itself and attack my internal organs and whatnot so something i was born with just kind of a sh shit immune system that forgets how to work sometimes and it decided to flare up on me in the middle of my olympia prep and it's i was honestly kind of relieved when i heard that because i finally knew what happened to me four years ago which was a terrifying experience and to finally learn what caused it was i guess good to hear because now we can deal with it we can manage it so essentially he told me i had three options and i could either keep taking the diuretics and kind of let it play out and see what happens or i can put they can put me on this corticosteroid called prednisone which is an intense immune suppressant and it kind of fucks your body up and i have to take a really high dose because i'm a big guy and that med really fucks you up so i took it last time and i felt like shit gives you anxiety cause you to put weight gain on it can give you such bad acid reflux that you get ulcers so i have to take more meds to stop myself from getting a stomach ulcer and the third option is intense like almost cancer therapy where they just kind of burn everything up in your body which i'm not willing to do especially at my age so the i asked him i was like can i do an in between and wait two weeks compete in my competition see if i can even look decent and then start the prednisone after that and he said yeah that's fine, like, I told him all about my bodybuilding, everything I'm doing, and he told me that that's not a cause, that it won't make it any worse for the time being. He said two more weeks, you'll be fine. Get that over with, get home, and get yourself right. So that was the goal, and after that, it was straight to work. He got left that doctor's office, went to the gym, and it was, it was game time, I guess. We had to start pushing it a lot more. Finally, we knew that I was, I didn't have any crazy problem that was gonna kill me. So we started pushing it more in the gym, pushing the diet even more. I was done with keto at that point, we put a little bit of carbs in, but still very low calorie, obviously, cause I was looking like I was behind. It was so stressful trying to do this diet and prep, waking up every morning and not looking good. We were literally just waiting to try and flush this water out of me and pull it off on stage. So those last few weeks were just hell of dieting, cardio, seeing, hoping I'm lean and just trusting that my body underneath all this water is lean and it will show on stage. <sighs> Sorry, I'm ranting, like I said, hard to put my thoughts together. I was a little worried about the flying because he said flying is something I should be avoiding. So I'm trying to have no trips after this, no more planes, but I had to get there. I was too determined at this point that I got the okay. I was like. I went through all this shit, I'm gonna make it to the stage and see what happens. So we got there, kept taking the diuretics, that he, the prescription diuretics that I got. Even making weight, made weight crazy hard because obviously water is a lot of weight. But finally we made weight, I weighed in at 228, 228 pounds. I probably should have been like 224 with how lean I thought I was. And that night we on, I doubled up on the prescription diuretic that they gave me to help flush some more water out and that was a terrifying night because I went to bed not looking too great when I put a little bit more carbs in my body I went up to like 236 pounds and I was not as lean as I knew I needed to be so I kind of went to bed like just fingers crossed praying it would flush out of me overnight and a lot of it did I woke up the next morning feeling okay I knew I didn't look 100% and my body was still like I could kind of squish some water in my hamstring. I'd go down to my shins and I could push it out. I have a video backstage with my tan, everything right before going on stage, pushing on my shins and still having a film of water there. Even everything we did, the water cut, the prescription diuretics, it wasn't enough to get it off my body. My lower stomach was um, one of the worst. When I was in the hospital even, I had like a pool of water right here. So obviously these are locations that my body holds water a lot, hamstrings, stomach, and so my like people who make the comments like oh Chris your legs aren't as crisp your abs aren't as crisp well yeah no shit I I didn't want to say anything before but yeah they were not nearly as crisp as they have been or the, as they should have been because well circumstances did not allow it to happen so honestly the the scariest part of almost all of this was prejudging 
I normally walk on stage, at least lately, with kind of a swagger and a confidence and I was backstage pumping up, looking at myself. I tried to hit an album thigh in the mirror and I just knew my, I didn't look crisp like I normally did. I didn't look how I had envisioned myself being able to look this prep. Because I had made a lot of improvements over the year and I was just excited to show it, but I knew I wasn't there. So when I stepped on stage, I was fucking terrified. I go up there and I remember hitting one pose and then turning to do a side chest and my legs were shaking like this. Like, I literally was expecting to look at the crowd and everyone would, like, I had a lot of fucking people waiting to come out and see how I was gonna do. I will admit that. And I looked, I was scared I was gonna look out there and people were just gonna be like, the fuck did this guy do? Like, he fucked his shit up. He looks like crap, you know? So, I, my confidence wasn't there because I wasn't confident in how it looked. I wasn't, I don't know. I just thought I was gonna come out and place 10th, not place, look like crap. So I was terrified. I hit a few poses, made myself relax, convinced myself you're here, you're on stage, just fucking enjoy it, keep doing it. And I relaxed a little bit, confidence came back a bit, and then we did the first call outs and they called me out there and I was, I was a little shocked. I was like, okay, fuck yeah, we're in here. We're still in here. And then they did our first comparisons and they brought me and Brian back to the back of the stage, which essentially they always do for the top two. And I'm not gonna lie to you, at that moment right there, I was fucking, I was done. I was like, I had already won in my mind. I'm fucking crying like forever and now I can't even talk on this goddamn camera. Ugh. But yeah, when they called us back and it was kind of like your top two, Chris, I was, I had one right there. I was like, holy shit, I can't believe we pulled this off. Like, the shit I went through in this prep mentally. Well, I walked off stage and my whole family, they snuck behind the security and they were, they were all waiting there. And I remember my sister just looked at me and just started, she just started bawling. And I was still kind of like, Smiling, walking around, I was talking to some of the guy that looked at her. I was like, why are you crying? And I just asked her why she was crying and I knew why. And I just started fucking bawling backstage. I looked over at Ian, even even, even, even was crying. Fucking big tough Ian had tears in his eyes and I lost it. They had fucking cameras on me too. I was like, get away from me. Film, like, I think it was AMI. Whoever was filming the Olympia had their cameras on me. I had just tears running in my face and it was just a really emotional moment. No one around us knew what we had been through. I mean, terrified I was never going to compete again, never going to be able to keep doing this. I think Ian said at first, it's nothing short of a miracle. I can't even think of that backstage moment. It's too emotional. After that, we went to the night show and I was I had so much pressure kind of off my shoulders. I was just chilling at this point. I was like, fuck it. We made it. Given the circumstances, things literally could not have gone any better. And I, then finally my panic settled in that I hadn't practiced my posing or my routine or anything. And I was like, shit. So I put my, I picked my song like the week before. It was a song I love and I know with heart. What about love? Which is very fitting. And uh, put my headphones in, listened to it, made the routine up in my head and kind of was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna wing it on stage. Went out there, did the routine, it was okay. I think some people didn't notice I wung it. Other people knew I kind of was standing there trying to think of a pose to hit, but we got through it. It was fine and ended up second place. I think Ian said it when we, we told a few people kind of what was going on that were close to us. And I think Ian said as a coach, estimating how I looked. He said I was probably at 80% 80, 80 of my best. So to come in and push through this shit at 80% was absolutely crazy. And I want to be the first one to say this right now that I don't want any fucking bullshit speculation about that I could have won with or without this. It happened, period. I could have come in at 100% and I still would have lost. I still would have come second. Breon was on, he deserved that win, period. And there's no point in speculating what could have or would have happened. I'm happy with my second place. Grateful that I even made it onto the stage and wasn't a complete embarrassment. Even though some of the pictures I'm like cringing, but 
I'm still grateful for that, but I want to like push that on everybody that regardless of what happened, this, this isn't an excuse at all for why I came second because I'm very happy I came second and the truth is I could have showed up at 100% and still lost like I said we don't know what could have happened because it didn't happen all we know is what happened now and next year I'm gonna show up 100% and I'm coming for that W so it's all that matters I, like I said I don't want to share the story as an excuse I just I feel like a lot of people might be able to connect to something like this or they might be going through something similar and if it can help anybody get through some shit, then goal. If it can help one person kind of push through some shit that they might be going through. Doesn't have to be fucking illness, doesn't have to be bodybuilding. Everyone's got shit that they go through that kind of, they bury down and they don't tell anybody about. And I learned firsthand that the most important part again through the shit is the people you have around you have a good support system people who believe in you when you're at rock bottom and yeah I guess that's the story of my 2018 Olympia prep and fucking hell was it a shocker a lot of days where I was ready to give up but we made it also now I'm hitting these meds, this prednisone, so I'm gonna be a grumpy mess on these. They give you kind of anxiety and a bunch of shitty side effects. I'm gonna lower my protein by like a quarter to be eating like three ounces a meal. I actually haven't been eating any meat for us since I've been back. I did a, a juice cleanse one day, just had nothing but a bunch of veggie juices and all that. So I'm gonna get nice and skinny, but health comes first another point i really want to press is if you see something going wrong with your body especially as bodybuilders we put ourselves through a lot get your shit checked out get your regular blood work get your urine test go in and you see your doctor regular like you should probably more if you're competing and just make sure don't push it off like i pushed it off a few weeks and finally went in but i could have gone in earlier and I, maybe i could have dealt with this at eight weeks out instead of three weeks out and everything could have been a lot different but I mean, we're all human. I was terrified to hear that it was going to be something worse than it was. So I waited till it got worse to actually do something about it. But I mean, do what they say, not what they do. I learned from my mistakes. At this point in my life now, I'm going to have to have checkups regularly because even though the, med the meds I'm taking put into remission, it is a disease I was born with and it will not go away. There's no cure for it. So essentially I just have to keep an eye out for flare-ups but it could have been a hell of a lot worse so I'm grateful that I'm here I'm grateful that it's something I can deal with it really makes me appreciate just everything I have and the people around me and the success in my life I kind of I've never been a, a why me person when something bad happens to me I'm more of a like yeah I got a fucking good life here's something to deal with Let's get through it, and let's get over it, let's deal with it. You got a good life. Be grateful for everything else you have going on. Uh, I still have my health at the end of the day. I know I will get better from this. Just a hiccup, something I had to go through, so... That's that, but these things really do open your eyes and make you appreciate just everything.